Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Our next panel is going to tackle an issue that is often accepted as just good enough because there hasn't been a great way to resolve it, at least until now. We're going to be talking about the silos. Ed talks to us about the silos all the time and inefficiencies in the process of getting used vehicles from the variable side of the dealership into fixed ops and then back over to variable. To break this down today, we have with us Ed Roberts, the Chief Operations Officer for Bozard Ford Lincoln in St. Augustine, Florida. Sean Kingry, Fixed Operations Vice President for the Kaiser Automotive Group. A.J. McGowan, the Co-Founder and President of AutoVision. And with us today is Sydney Hayter, the Senior Vice President of Reynolds and Reynolds. Gentlemen, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Ted. AJ, um, if you would, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and why you started AutoVision? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is AJ McGowan. Um, and, um, you know, I think when they're being kind, they call me a serial entrepreneur. Um, so I've uh, dabbled in a couple of different spaces, really with a focus on leveraging big data and cloud compute to tackle really hard problems. Uh, what got me excited about the automotive space and about starting AutoVision uh, was that I saw that there was a huge opportunity to really leverage modern technology, modern data science to improve efficiency, um, give people access to more data. And one of the big areas around that where we saw a ton of inefficiency was you know, sort of the disconnect between fixed and variable ops and kind of trying to get everybody you know, working off of the same page. So um, you know, really excited to, uh, to be here and talking to everybody today about that. Excellent. Sydney, talk to us a little bit about Reynolds and Reynolds and uh, how this fits within the Reynolds retail management system. Sure, Ted. Uh, you know, I'm looking at from Reynolds' perspective, uh, about seven to eight years ago, we started looking into the used car solution and uh, realizing that for too long, the used vehicle department is kind of like has, has had a disengaged link from the overall management system. And Reynolds always had a retail management um, system view. So part of this solution was for us to figure out how we want to integrate end-to-end -end one solution, where, whether it's in variable ops or fixed ops, especially on the used car side. A lot of stuff already there for new cars, but wasn't there from our perspective from Reynolds on the used car side. So giving the ability for the dealer to have the same VIN all across without with the least amount of entries possible where the flow of information and data was taking place, whether it was in the DMS or whether it was in the appraisal process, uh, in the acquisition of the vehicle and the reconditioning of the vehicle, finally up to selling and wholesaling and closing out the books on the, on the finance side of things. So we wanted one system for all of this to happen and uh, we were working on trying to either build our own solution or find the best that was out there. And so uh, luckily we were able to acquire two really strong players in this industry to put this whole solution together for us. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle and AutoVision um, was, was one of the best that was out there. All right, well, let's dive a little bit deeper into the issue, everybody. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we're talking about successfully getting a used car ready uh, for sale from the time we acquire it in the front end to reconditioning to inventory management and merchandising. And uh, I know the folks on this panel have experienced uh, what that's all about. And I think what we're really talking about, Sean and Ed, are communications all right, between the departments. And perhaps when a, there's a breakdown in that communication and uh, Ed and Sean, let me come to you with Ed being first. You're a Reynolds customer. Uh, how much does that, does that really happen? And, uh, you know, how big an impact could that have in a dealership such as yourself? Well, for the last, for the last few years, we have rode a surf, so to speak, of what used car values are. And so whether we take it in today and we recon it and it takes 10 days to get it out there, that high is still there. Well, that's not what we're riding right now. And it's not what we what we rode really the last two thirds of 23. And it's very much been a roller coaster. So, for instance, before I got on this here with you guys, we was talking about a particular vehicle that I took in on trade seven days ago. And I put MMR in that trade 
or somewhere as close to MMR. And the uh, we made a decision on that vehicle yesterday based on some of the stuff that we found with it to take it to the auction. We did try to retail it for a couple of days, knowing what we had with it. But bottom line is, it was less than thirty thousand dollars MMR when I took it in seven days ago, and I sold it for ten thousand dollars less than that yesterday at the auction. Five hundred dollars back of MMR. That's the market that we're in. That's the roller coaster that we're in right now. So it is imperative to build a turn, to build it to, from acquisition, whether it's a trade or it's a street buy, to be able to have that thing retail ready in as quickly a time frame as possible. And we try to remove all the friction here to be able to do that. And there comes with a high level of trust to, be able to make that happen. And we average just over 24 hours in our reconditioning from time of acquisition to retail ready. It's 27 and a half hours right now. Uh, and even with that, that is still high. Losing $9,500 over the course of seven days from MMR to MMR is, is, is the world that we're living in. And so we have narrowed that first 10 day cycle to even much smaller than that. We need to be able to do something with those things in the first three or four days. Sean Kingry, this, this communication involves not just the service manager, it involves the used car manager, perhaps the general manager, and even the dealer. Does this kind of thing drive you? Drive you nuts as well. It does, and you know, Ed, Ed couldn't be any more right. You know, we're all off the COVID ether now, if you will, and that's over. That's gone. It's a thing in the past. You know, and and Ed brought up an example. You know, I'm sitting at a store up in Green Bay right now that I come to today, and it has seven cars that have been outside longer than six days. They've already detailed the car and the shop because they've done such a good job growing the shop and having retention. They can't get the used cars in, and and Ed is so spot on with it and. MMR and, and, and value of the vehicle. Take you bring up the communication between the used car manager and the GM, and there has to be a tool that you use. That communication is key. You can't have silence. You know, I, I, Ted, you and I spoke even before we started recording today, way off subject here, but we went and visited a hospital. We did a big donation. And you know, the funny thing was, and, and when I say a, a big seven figure donation, the variable guys got in one car and the fixed guys got in another. And I said, oh, timeout. That, that's the key. You have to remove those silos. And but they laughed about it, but Ted, it's a good point. True. But you know, you need a, you need a communication tool that if the vehicle's in the shop and it's in the air and it ends at twenty four or ends at twenty seven hours, that is unheard of. That's a that's a huge number. But here's here's what we've done is in in our group and it started at five days. That if a vehicle's in my shop for five days, we cut the bill in half. That includes the tech parts and labor, and it's now down to three days. All right. We make it hurt. And now you get everybody's buy in. And it's really it's that word that we overuse nowadays. It's accountability. It's accountability from everybody. Now, that means you got to have the steps and you got to know where the breakdown is. If the, if the breakdown is in transportation from the auction, then you got to figure that out. If it's from checking it in, you got to if it's in photos, photos is a real big area. And I'm going down a different path here. But that vehicle, as to Ed's point, has to be on the lot now, not tomorrow. Now. We have snowstorms in Wisconsin. We brag that we don't, but we do. That can't delay the process. By the way, tomorrow we're supposed to get a bunch of snow, like always. And by the way, those cars are all going to be in the shop waiting to get worked on because you know you're going to have no shows. Ed has hurricanes, for example, hypothetically. Okay, listen, you got to account for those, and you got to find a way to get it through. But everybody has to be involved. There can be no breakdown in communication, no breakdown in the process. And if you have a breakdown, you have to identify it and fix it. Great points, gentlemen. Uh, Sydney first, and then AJ. Sydney, what do you believe the problem is? So, Ted, I think that you know the the biggest problem is getting both the departments, uh, whether it's between variable and fixed ops, on the same page. So it's the flow of data. So think about this: if the used car manager or the person appraising the vehicle found out upfront what the issues were. Um, through some technology that should exist today, which actually in our new solution will, okay. uh, whatever the engine light codes are, what the pictures or the air shoes were during the appraisal process, all that data, if it was immediately communicated and properly communicated back to the recon department on fixed ops, then they would be on the same page. So think, you know, the biggest challenge that the dealerships have is both time 
and also the two departments thinking on the same line. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that variable ops and fixed ops is on the same page on their used car. Um, the best thing uh, for a used car department, the success of any used car department is gauged by two factors. How fast can I sell that vehicle and how much profit can I make on that car? So the, for, to be the, it, for, for that vehicle to be the most profitable and the quickest sale, those two departments have to communicate better. And in today's fast world, you know, the approval sometimes is, is stuck or the thought process on that vehicle is on the variable ops, but not communicated every day to the fixed ops side. So fixed ops is working in their silo, variable ops is working on their silo, yeah. and those two departments need to be together. So that data flow, I think, is the biggest challenge today. Yeah. Um, AJ, let me come back to you. Uh, what do you believe the problem is? And uh, tell us some more. Yeah, I mean, certainly everything that Sydney said is 100% true. Um, that, you know, getting all of those departments to interconnect is a huge, huge challenge. Um, you know, the, the other thing that I would, you know, sort of pile on there is that, you know, the things that they're communicating also have to be correct. Um, and so, you know, when, when I look at it and sort of how I view the world from a data lens is, you know, if you go back, the idea of using sort of data science in automotive, you know, is really only about 20 years old. It was really focused on, you know, trying to move cars as quickly as possible, right? And, you know, what we're doing with, with AutoVision is really allowing dealers, instead of looking at like a generic set of data in the market, um, where, you know, they're just kind of comparing themselves against everybody else that's out there, we, yeah. using modern tools, let them actually say, here's how I view the market. Here's the lens in which my dealership looks at my competitors, looks at, you know, I'm a Honda dealer and I'm looking at this Honda Civic differently than the Jaguar dealer down the street, right? Um, and getting that data baked into the system then allows all of your departments to view it with the same lens, right? So getting them talking to each other, but then also letting them look at it from the perspective of the dealership and with your, you know, unique business model, your unique view of your market, you know, I think is really, really critically important. And I think one of the challenges that's out there is that there really has not been and is not today until now a modern tool that helps dealers do this. Uh, there are other outdated solutions, but uh, really nothing up to date uh, with it, considering all the things that we've been through in the last two or three years. Sure. Yeah. AutoVision, really Auto, AutoVision does a great job of tying them together. And yes, you're right. To, we've had some tools out there that kind of put band-aids on cer certain holes that we have, but nothing that ties everything together. And, and that's what I see here is we got something that ties it all together and it creates what Sean said earlier, the accountability that we all need. Sean, I've heard you mention those silos as well. Um, your perspective in terms of a, a modern tool. You know, I think you have to have them, and everybody's got to have access to that modern tool. There's no secrets, guys. Everybody needs to see it. It needs to be present. It needs to be up front. You know, the old the old lot walks. You know, and again, I think I, I made I made it during a different panel. I'll officially be in the car business 30 years this April, guys. The old lot walks. You know, it used to walk with the used car manager, but that's how you got started. But that's also how cars didn't sit in the back row for five to seven days, and nobody knew about it either. And now, you know, with this tool, there's at least tools where everybody can be held accountable. If there's if there's issues, you can address the issues and they don't go away. For that, I'm gonna take it all fixed for a second and go back on the variable side. You know, you have a car in the back, well, it's a Corvette and it needs four thousand dollars worth of tires. Well, you didn't know it need tires when you traded for it. I mean, it so stop pointing the fingers and stop blaming. You should have noticed that at the time that you took it in on trade, and you should have accounted for that so you're not letting it sit outside and rot because it's not getting any pre any prettier you know the c8 in the corvette market was hot a year ago like crazy hot it's not so hot anymore guys that that market turned in a hurry and now you've got dealerships that were buying 20 or 30 of these things for 20 grand over window sticker that's a lot of water to take on and again it's all about the silo it's all about communication but you need to communicate that with your service department that says hey listen this car is getting ugly it, to ed's point the one example he had this car got ugly really quick and everybody needs to know that so they understand why you're in back beating on them so hard because if you tell them and you 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 involve them we'll fix the problem as long as you tell them about it aj there's been a great awakening in the retail car business the last few years uh on the importance of getting those vehicles ready 
for front line, okay, and doing that like Ed is doing it in uh, Ed very low number, 27 hours, I believe you said. And AJ, we've operated in silos for so long, and the communication uh, as well between those departments has not always been that great. AJ, what about after the reconditioning process is over? Uh, is there a same, uh, is there still a gap there in communication? Yeah, it, absolutely. So, you know, I think that it, it's, it's a cohesive flow, right? It's that at every step in the process, everybody needs to understand exactly where you're positioned in the car. Um, because, you know, and I hear Sydney actually talk about this a lot, so steal steal his words, but, um, you know, it's about putting time back on the clock, right? Instead of having this artificial pressure to move the car as fast as possible, creating the accountability that you were talking about earlier, Sean, um, and creating the kind of transparency that you need inside of your dealership for people to be able to understand exactly what's going on, right? Is this a unit that I'm going to be profitable on? And so maybe that's one that throws my average on turn time a little bit because I've got to wait for one more part, but I'm going to get that thing in there. I'm going to turn it around. I know I'm going to make a bunch of money, but you don't, you don't know if you can do that or not, if everybody's not, you know, looking at the same data set, right? And that's, you know, a big thing for us at AutoVision is about making sure that, you know, we know our dealers are smart, right? We know that they know the market, they know how they run their business. We want to help them uh, and enable them with data in every facet of that business to operate more efficiently, rather than trying to kind of shove them into, you know, a single rabbit hole or a, a one size fits all solution. AJ, you're going to potentially impact millions of vehicles here. Okay, with this product, AutoVision, you know, in providing a new solution for dealers. And um, uh, your thoughts there, because, you know, there's a lot of responsibility with that. We, we take it very seriously. You know, I mean, when you look at it, um, and it's just to keep, you know, kind of on the same thread, you know, part of, part of what we're doing is, um, you know, and this is a big part of our general philosophy, is when we started the company and we said, how are we going to analyze this data? You know, we said, we shouldn't have an opinion. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what that vehicle is worth. What I'm going to do is enable you to have the tools uh, to be able to do the kind of automation. Or when I say automation, I mean like repetitive tasks, stuff that's annoying or, you know, that you have to do every day that you really shouldn't have to, right? Rather than trying to take the dealer out of the equation, what we're trying to do is to magnify their expertise in their market. And so, you know, when I look at that, you know, my... What I look at as our responsibility is making sure that we're always providing very highly accurate data in terms of, you know, not having ghost cars that haven't been out there for three months and, you know, making sure that we're correctly, you know, getting you all the right comps. Um, but by the same token, I also don't want to tell you, you know, hey, this is an absolute value that, that may or may not be true. And so that's, you know, that's something that we take very, very seriously every time we're tempted to say, well, no, you know, maybe we know better about this data. We say, no, it's it's more worthwhile for us to create, you know, three or four more options and make it configurable so that when dealers want to dig in and really dial that thing in, they can. Sydney, let me come back to you. I believe Reynolds and Reynolds is very deliberate when they make a decision and uh, they do the due diligence uh, with, in this case, AutoVision. Um, what about that reconditioning process when it's over? and the communication process or the communication gap, how will that be able to help a store like Ed Roberts, uh, a Reynolds dealer in St. Augustine, Florida for many, many years? Yeah, I, I think that Ed has, uh, and both Ed and Sean have nailed it, that, you know, the, the uh, kind of like what AJ just mentioned, uh, putting time back on the clock is so important because time is money. So if it takes longer, uh, that's one problem. Um, uh, and you basically put yourself under pressure in order for you to sell that car within the time frame that the dealership business rules want you to. So you don't get enough time uh, to market that vehicle properly. That's one problem. Second issue is that, uh, you know, if you don't have the right data, um, which means that how the variable ops is thinking about that vehicle needs to somehow be communicated to variable ops, uh, I'm sorry, the fixed ops and reconditioning. Mm -hmm. And so in order for that communication to happen, um, the tools have to be synced as one. Um, tickets are created in the DMS, reconditioning is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, points are done there while you have other systems that are being managed in the variable ops side. So our goal was to, from Reynolds perspective, was to create this one seamless system that 
you know, at the time you appraise the vehicle, if you know that you're going to be taking this vehicle in for trade or to, uh, or acquire it through an auction site or whatever the case may be, start that ticket right away. Don't let that vehicle wait and have some other system or other input or entries start the reconditioning process. Give that information really upfront before that zero point. Uh, understand that that there could be deals where you have to wait for some things or for some approvals to take place, but get that information ahead of time to reconditioning so that they can start preparing for that process up front, number one. Number two, AJ mentioned data. So important, kind of like what Ed said earlier, in a 10-day process, he, they lost $10,000 because the MMR changed so fast. Well, the reconditioning team needs to know that as well. If they have the information in the reconditioning tools that were part of one system, then they'll know that this MMR is changing fast. They need to make some decisions on that vehicle fast enough and quick. And thirdly, the communication between variable and fixed so that if they need an approval from somebody, that goes quickly through the, the, the bucket list. And now they are able to do their job a little quicker. So I think that time, communication, uh, data, and then finally being able to think about that vehicle similarly between variable and fixed is so important. And that's what we try to do between auto vision and our reconditioning system recontract and put that all together as one simple same system with one single sign on from the DMS. Ed, your perspective is unique because you came up through the fixed operations side of the business and now you're the COO of this very large dealership. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, Sydney is it, and and Reynolds is notorious for going out there and saying, "Hey, we have a hole here. We we got a good product, but we got an opportunity to enhance it." And they don't go out there and just fill that gap with something enhanced. They look for the best product out there, and uh, and that's what they've done here. And and it's tied the two together, recontract and auto vision together, and it gives us a tool to work with. And it, and a, a lot of times, that, that the vehicle that I talked about earlier on, that happened in seven days from the time of acquisition Ooh. to the time that we dumped it. And imagine if that thing would have continued to fall and we'd have held onto that thing for 30 days or whatever it may have been. Now I paid, I, I, I put less than 30 in it and I got just barely 20 out of it. Mm. What if it had been worth 15? Mm -hmm. The I could take that 20 and reinvest it in something that I can turn some gross with rather than lose another pie. I need things that can identify those things and allow us to make quick decisions. Sean Kingry over at Kaiser. You know, it, it, and I'm going to take what everybody said here, what AJ said and what Sydney said. You know, you talk about transparency. AJ mentioned transparency. You know, it and 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 Sydney talks about putting time back on the clock. Guys, we're all about on the fixed side. We're all about the hours. If, if there's one thing we've all we've all we've all moved to the hours. Okay, hours for us is time on the lot that the vehicle's not on the lot for the used car side. And, and, and back to Signy's point, if you're trading for a vehicle, and let's just say it's a vehicle you normally don't service, you normally don't have it, and you have a tool that says, hey, by the way, we, we traded for, a, I'm going to use it, we traded for a Maserati, not a vehicle you stock parts for, not a vehicle you know about, but if you know what's coming, you know in advance, you need the oil, you need the oil filter. Chances are, if it's got 40,000 miles, you're going to need the brakes for that car. You can have that stuff in advance that, by the way, you just saved one day, literally a day waiting for the parts that you didn't have because you knew in advance that that car was coming. We don't have that tool yet. I mean, to be honest, on our side of the world, we don't have that. We don't know. We lose time in parts because we don't know. We don't know in advance. And I've got. I'm already taking a ton of notes here. Of course, you know the thing we haven't mm -hmm. talked about is floor plan. And floor, you know, floor plan was a huge money maker for dealerships for how many years, especially during COVID. If oh. you could turn your inventory like you were, I mean, we're talking six, seven figure income turns. Floor plans now a debit. We're getting we're getting our rears handed to us. And if you can explain to a parts person or if a parts person and a used car manager have a relationship that says, hey, listen, this car needs a power steering pump. I don't care what it is. This It needs a widget. But the widget's $200. But I can have it here in three days because we got to be loyal to the OEM because we're held accountable for loyalty for parts returns and, and, all, and everything that goes along with it. But by the way, it's $200 today or I can get it down the street from another OEM dealership to match for $230 and have it on the lot today. That communication is huge, guys. Mm -hmm. It's $30 more. Yes, the used car manager, I don't want to pay it. Okay, fine. Then your car sits an extra three days. To Ed's point, seven days cost him $10,000. Yeah. 
Would you rather pay the $30 for a power steering pump today or $10,000 seven days later? And it really comes down to everything that's been said here. Sydney, looking out over the horizon, you know, Ed is a Reynolds dealer. Uh, Sean is not, okay. And uh, will this be able to benefit a, uh, a dealer, you know, such as Sean Kingry? Yeah, I think so. I, I believe that, you know, granted that there's some additional development that we have to do uh, for other DMS uh, customers out there, which we are going to take. Our first goal was to make sure that we create a system end to end uh, for uh, definitely the Reynolds DMS dealers, but okay. within the used car marketplace, making sure that, you know, uh, kind of like what Sean just mentioned, a Maserati to a Honda store versus a Maserati to a Porsche or a Maserati dealer has completely different values um, from, a, from a trade perspective. But at the same time, it also uh, requires that knowledge base about parts and, and things that you've got to start on the fixed op site early on because you just not may not have those parts in stock and you're not dealing with that vehicle if you plan to buy that car and retail it. So I think that, uh, that the ability for us to take all of that data on a daily basis and provide that information without having the user to go find the changes themselves. So in Ed's case, for instance, if the MMR is changing, we normally would be giving them a heads up that here's where the trend is going for this vehicle. So he can make those decisions early on and not have to wait. Maybe if the MMR was dropping that fast, and we were able to give him a heads up instead of him waiting for 10 days and reconditioning to get done, uh, he would probably move that car out faster and probably cut down on those losses. So, so those are the things that from a data analytical perspective that we will be delivering through this solution, uh, regardless of the DMS. So I think that Sean should be able to benefit from the solution. Although I think that our first get goal is to go with with more seamless integration with the DMS and ERA. And then secondly, we would be doing this coming in shortly after, which is probably sometimes this year, we'll be doing some integration with other DMS providers. as well. Ed, here we are at the end of January, looking and peering into the, the 2024 year. How timely will this be uh, for dealers, you know, considering all that's happened with the market and all the uncertainty that, you know, we still face? So I talked about the last two thirds of last year being a, really a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that all this year. Mm -hmm. it, the markets don't just change and then settle. They change over a period of time and they, they are up and down and, and it may be progressively down or maybe progressively up. And right now we're riding a, a, a roller coaster that's on its way down. And so that is going to be there. This is a timely product for this year because it is a product that, that can help dealers better manage their assets. And uh, most dealers do not floor plan their, their used cars. So it is their cash that they have out there. And the last thing you want to do is let that stuff keep going out the window. Sean, I'll let you weigh in on uh, on how this will be impacted. By it's, this he's to, to his point, you know, we can't forget that it's also an election year. Election year is going to change everything. We all know it. Interest rates are going to change. Gas prices are changing. You know, Look what you're paying for gas today versus what you were paying 30 days ago. Forget, you know, to Ed's point on his car. 30 days ago, guys, we're a dollar fifty. We were talking about just this morning. We're a dollar fifty less a gallon. Don't don't underestimate the value of what the election this year is going to do to that. It's going to change our market completely. And again, time is money. Time is hours. Those hours is those used cars being on the front line again, ready for retail. You know, AJ, here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable, you're here, you will hear a lot that it's all about the hours, as these gentlemen say. And that's really something that we've really taken in uh, and we track, and it's really become the new measurement. Uh, I'll give you the last word, uh, AJ. And actually, AJ, and then I'll let uh, Sydney weigh in for the last word. Sure. Well, I, you know, in terms of uh, being hours, I, I speak that language. You know, everything, everything that we do is, you know, near real time. Um, so that's a, you know, kind of a big distinction for us. And as you talk Ed, about watching those values drop, you know, when you look at the AutoVision retail market data, we're pulling that every single day um, and refreshing all of those values. And a lot of the, the insights there can help to be predictive of what the wholesale values are going to do and what the retail's values are going to do. So not just is it dropping, but is it likely to drop um, are the, kind, the kinds of things that you can get out of our market insights. So 
you know, when we when we think about it, we think about it exactly the same way, which is time is money. We got to get the right data in the right people's hands. We got to do it as fast as possible. So we're speaking the same language. Sydney, the last word. Um, I, I would echo uh, both what Ed and Sean and AJ just said that I would say, uh, you know, the, the supply chain disturbances since COVID has completely changed the marketplace and how things are changing rapidly, not just uh, similar uh, changes all across the country, actually within the region, within within a certain spot, within a certain city even, uh, you basically see completely different um, uh, market um, uh, responses and the supply chain on the new car is impacting the used car market. So all of a sudden you get vehicles coming in and the price starts to drop on use. The vehicles start to slow down uh, because of whatever changes happen in the, in, the, in, in the supply chain of new cars. And all of a sudden the used car price on certain vehicles start to really ramp up fast. And it happens within days. And so it's not something that used to be a trend that you can catch on. It's just a rapidly changing environment. And you need fast tools and data, especially with the AI that allows you to, 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 to provide that information to the dealer. And in our case, we want to, uh, to inform and, and make the fixed op side more knowledgeable about that piece as well. So no question, time is money, but also I think that, that the market, understanding where the market is going on a daily basis for fixed ops is as important as it is for variable ops. And we intend on delivering all of that within our solution to that so we can make them smarter. Like AJ said, we don't want to tell them how to do their business. We want to make sure that they just become smarter with this new intelligent data. We'll leave it there, gentlemen. Uh, AutoVision is available. Data driving better communication between fixed and variable. Uh, we invite you to reach out. Uh, you see the Reynolds uh, website there, rayray.com forward slash driving data. and. Uh, AJ and Sydney, uh, end of the week, uh, a lot of folks are heading over to uh, NADA in Las Vegas. Uh, will you be there uh, with the AutoVision as part of Reynolds? Absolutely. Come on over and see us at the Reynolds booth, um, and we'll be, uh, we'll be happy to show you what we've got and hopefully, uh, hopefully helping a lot of folks to fix these problems we've been talking about today. All right. Well, we're excited, everybody. Excited for you. Excited for what Reynolds has coming. And... Uh, AJ and uh, Sydney, congratulations on uh, uh, AutoVision. And uh, we look forward to hearing great things and having you back to tell us about the successes. I want to thank Ed Roberts for being with us today, uh, Sean Kingry, AJ McGowan from AutoVision, Sydney uh, from Reynolds and Reynolds. Everybody, AutoVision panel here with us today at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks for having us, Ted. Thanks, you.